I bought the M4 Mac Mini when it came out for $600 because the specs it offered at the price were pure value. After using it as my only computer for the past three months, I'm here to share everything I've learned. The good, the bad, and what I wish I'd known sooner. There's a reason I haven't come out with this review until now. A lot of creators rushed out reviews in the months after launch. But when a system becomes your main editing rig, your setup evolves over time. Today I'll cover how the M4 Mac Mini has performed in everyday tasks and professional work. Why an SSD has been absolutely necessary. My personal experience editing video and handling multitasking. And finally, whether the M4 Mac Mini remains the best value Mac after three months, so let's dive in. First off, let's talk about the design. The M4 Mac Mini is an insanely small machine, just 5 inches by 5 inches and 2 inches tall. It's smaller than almost everything you can imagine. Smaller than my Blackmagic full frame we're filming right now, a roll of duct tape, and even barely bigger than the Apple TV. I've shown it in previous videos. Despite its tiny footprint, it packs an impressive 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, and 16 gigs of unified RAM, all for $600. When you compare it to, say, the M4 iMac that starts at $1299, you're saving a ton, but you don't have a built-in display, so there is that. The price point is unbeatable, though, making it one of the best value deals in Apple's lineup. Over the past few months, I've used the Mac Mini for all my everyday tasks, email, social media, watching videos, and just surfing the web. But where it really shines for me is in my professional work. I mainly edit podcasts and YouTube videos on this machine using DaVinci Resolve. The footage I normally work with is 6K RAW files from cameras like the Red Komodo, Blackmagic 6K full frame, and 10-bit footage from my Sony camera, DJI, even the iPhone ProRes. For the most part, I edit on a 1080p timeline and then export to 4K when I'm finished with the edit. I've experienced no issues and the performance is very comparable to my M3 Pro MacBook Pro and that's why I did a video comparing both of them. You could see it in the description below. The only hiccup I've had is with CDNG RAW, which is an obscure format, but it does slow things down a bit, so I've had to lower the resolution in order to keep access to the RAW tools. Keep in mind, there may also be other codecs that slow down or present challenges, but my experience is from the cameras that I currently have and tested, so just keep that in mind. There may be codecs that have a minor issue that I just haven't used because I don't own those cameras. I've been running a dual monitor setup most of the time I've had this machine. I even experimented with three monitors for a bit, but I didn't really find a compelling reason to use the third one regularly. The main thing it did help though was keeping my activity monitor up at all times, which was very impressive because a lot of people worry if 16 gigabytes of RAM is enough for them. And I rarely maxed out my 16 gigs of RAM. And typically I'm running DaVinci Resolve while I have two to three Safari tabs open. It's not a crazy amount of processing, but it's enough that keeps me well under the 16 gigabyte limit, which for me means I haven't really had to upgrade my RAM. And of course, there's also the swap memory you get with this machine. It works really well. Now, speaking of swap memory, here is the catch with the base model. 256 gigabytes of standard SSD space on the base model. It's quite limiting. And while it's fine for basic tasks, when you're working with high resolution video files and large projects, it fills up pretty quick. So that's where an external SSD doesn't only come in, it's absolutely necessary. I use external SSD Thunderbolt 4 drives that match the internal drive speeds of the M4 Mac Mini without really having any type of compromise performance wise other than they do add bulk to the machine. I've covered the OWC Thunderbolt 4 Express drive. I've also covered the Orico drive. The benefits and trade-offs are the OWC drive is completely quiet and it's very portable while the Orico drive drive is very ergonomic, it's very efficient, it doesn't really add to the overall setup of the M4 Mac Mini, but it does have a really loud fan. So there are trade-offs and I discussed them in both of those videos, I'll leave them in the description down below. Now there are a few ways to integrate external SSDs with the Mac Mini, and I've covered them in a video that I'll link down below just so we don't make this video extremely long. They range from using the external drives as external SSDs to making those SSDs replace the internal drive. So again, I'll leave links in the description description below so you can check those videos out after this video if you've decided that's the route you want to go. 
part of the reason I gloss over this is over the past few months, companies have started offering new storage chips specifically for the M4 Mac Mini. You can upgrade to two terabytes on your internal drive for around $279, which is a massive savings compared to Apple's $800 price tag to update the M4 Mac Mini to two terabytes. However, you do have to open up your Mac Mini to install this, which voids your warranty. I'm not in a rush to do this yet, which is why I haven't covered it, but I do plan on doing this in the near future, so make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos so you can see when I test out the internal drive replacement and see if it's worth doing. So, after three months of daily use, is the M4 Mac Mini worth it? And the answer is, absolutely, but only if you pair it with an external SSD. For $600, the M4 Mac Mini offers incredible performance for everyday and professional tasks. I can edit high resolution video, run multiple monitors, and do that without maxing out my 16 gigs of RAM. It's able to handle my creative workload efficiently. The 256 gigabytes of internal SSD space is a limitation, but the external SSDs pretty much solve that problem without breaking the bank. If you're a content creator, YouTuber, or a podcast editor doing that kind of video editing, this machine is an insane value. And if you ever need to upgrade internally, because there are the third-party storage chip kits down the line, that may be an option in the future down the road once your warranty expires. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to the latest videos on the channel. And also let me know in the comments below, are you using an external SSD with your M4 Mac Mini or are you planning to? I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.